Yo, Parish Orbits and Retrogrades. We live in the follow-up time to the Pope Francis pontificate, and this means that perennially, we are living in the follow-up time of one or more comments. I've waited a few days from the, I guess, 48 hours from the Pope Francis Procedine remark. There are too many homo sapiens in seminary. And we need to avoid this sort of procedine. Let's just Google what that means. So, what is this? Has the Pope, even using a, a slur, procedine is an F word, regarding too many homo sapiens in the seminary. What is he? Has he become a right winger? The way a lot of, um, I don't know, 21 year old Catholics who know nothing about the first half of this pontificate because they were 10 or something and not yet Catholic are asserting, or it does it mean because he walked it back, he did in fact walk it back that he is a, a fearful normie who gets cowed by the leftist media. No, it means neither of those things. It means neither of those things. So Pope Francis originally said, there should be no more homo sapiens admitted into the seminary. We've already had enough frochagine, F word for homo sapiens. You know the translation in English. And that sounds kind of based. But then afterwards, this is yesterday, one day later, the Vatican released a statement translated to English reading as such. Pope Francis is aware of articles that recently came out about a conversation behind closed doors which, uh, with the bishops of the CEI, that's Italian bishops. As he had the opportunity to state on several occasions, quote, in the church there's room for everyone, for everyone, no one is useless, no one is superfluous, there's room for everyone just as we are, everyone. The Pope never intended to express himself in, a, in a phobic terms, H-phobic terms, and he extends his apologies to those who were offended by the use of a term, uh, the, the, the other term, reported by others, frochagine. So, is he now retreating like a coward somewhere in the left center or right center, the way apologies usually are uh, indicative of fear from people in the left or right center, from the rat fear of the radical left. Now, I'll explain exactly why it's not that Pope Francis made this remark because he's based. He didn't make the retraction because he's afraid. Both remarks are part of a calculated plan. Parish orphans and retrogrades. Pope Francis isn't afraid of the right. He's not afraid of the left. He's a man of the left, but he runs point. He's not afraid of either side. This is part of the plan. He does it to perfection. It's all programmatic Peronism. That is to say, an ideology that he learned a praxeology slash ideology that he learned as a young man in Buenos Aires from a political dictator there, Juan Perón, who he admired. Use, doublespeak, act like you're minding some boundary as you use doublespeak. Doublespeak is a fundamental contradiction of the principle of non-contradiction, which is the, the central human in intellectual First principle, it's a, in some sense the axiom which holds Western civilization together when Western civilization used to make sense. So act like you're afraid of some rules, and he's not afraid of any rules. He doesn't mind any. I'll explain what that program is on today's episode of Rules for Retrogrades. The smart money in the Pope Francis pontificate is 100% always on Peronism. The idea that Juan Peron used in Buenos Aires 
involving a praxeology of doublespeak. It's, it's not new. It's not like he created it because he, he didn't create it. But, but he used it in a way in South America in the middle 20th century, late 20th century, that was a little bit more nuanced than the typical snowball and Napoleon animal farm Marxist way. He would really lean into being saying something right wing for a month. Then he'd really lean into saying something left wing for a month. Remember, in 2013, when Cardinal McCarrick gave a speech at Villanova, he said there's one guy that could do what we, the Sankt Gallen Mafia, wanted him to do. I'm, I'm paraphrasing some. And this guy was this Buenos Aires Bergoglio subtext who was a great admirer of Juan Perón. And the way he would have to do it would be by saying things like frochagine, too much of that in the seminaries. Don't let any of the homo sapiens into seminaries anymore. And then reversing it the next day and saying the Pope never intended to offend anyone in homophobic terms. And before he did either of these things, remember, he published Fiducia Supplicants. So you make a sandwich, bread, meat, bread, out of doing pro-lavender mafia agenda items. Implement Hell Me, we say. Well, Pope Francis is always showing us where his allegiances lie. It's the Lavender Mafia. So he made it, he changed a new, a, a, a two-year-old, that is to say a new CDF document, which had reaffirmed 2,000 years of teaching that you cannot give SS unions, or SS couples, rather, blessings. You can't give the unions the blessings, but you can give the couples the blessings. Well, he had fired Cardinal Ladaria, prefect of the CDF, for circulating a document in March of 2021 saying, of course you can't give a blessing to this mortally sinful uh, couple. They, they can each come in individually, same as a mafia can always come in individually, but a mafia can't come in on his way to a hit and say, I'm about to do a hit, can you bless it? Or a mafioso can't come in with his girlfriend and say, hey, would you bless me and my girl here? He's cheating on his wife. No, even without confession, anyone individually, a homo sapien, a mafia guy, a murderer, can go and get a blessing from a priest. But remember, 2021, the CDF had upheld its teachings through Cardinal Ladaria that, of course, you can't get a double blessing for a guy and his extramarital affair girlfriend or a couple of uh, Skittles men, because that's basically the step before saying you can have extramarital affairs or SS unions. Francis says, no, you're wrong. You're out. Um, Ladaria, you're in. Cardinal Tucho, first thing Cardinal Tucho does this, the next day after he becomes CDF prefect is he says, we're reversing this. Ladaria got fired for being faithful, and they start working on fiducia supplicants. They publish that, and it's all about blessings for SS couples. So that's the one. So Francis already showed us where he is on this. By the way, in March of 2020, a year before that, he said, I support the worldwide global lawfare allowing SS unions. He's just saying what he supports. He's not saying as a Catholic, he, that has nothing to do with blessings. But so he reiterated that he wants SS unions to be legal in every country in the world. 2020, 2021, um, the, the faithful Catholic document comes out later 2021. He fires Ladaria for that act, gets in Cardinal Tucho at late 2022, and then the first thing they do is fiducia supplicants violating Catholic teaching. Violating Catholic teaching on this particular matter of homo sapiens, homophobia. So that's the first act. Then in the middle, 
later this week, he says, oh, there's too much of this frochagine in the seminaries, which contradicts everything. We don't, you know, it's anti L M N O P T Q plus. It sounds based and right wing. And then he walks it back, but note the language of the walk back. Francis is never afraid. The Pope never intended to offend or express himself in homophobic terms, and he extends his apologies to those who were offended by the use of the term, Rochagine, reported by others. So this is not him being afraid. Him saying it was not him being right wing. He confuses you with doublespeak, and then he goes ahead and does what he wants to do. with. He is a man of the left. I'm not sure about Juan Perón. Juan Perón, they say, was left, right, middle, whatever he had to do to get more power. But Francis is committed to the Sankt Gallen agenda. So he makes a sandwich, a bread, a, you know, an A, top piece of the bread, A prime, opposite is the meat, A, bottom piece of the bread, sandwich, and then he moves ahead. And everyone's just, wow, he made a mess. What is, what is that expression? Hagia Lea, Leo, uh, make a mess. That's what he said he wanted to do with do the church. Oh, do we have that one? Where's that sound clip? That, that's what he said he wants to do, and, and that's what he, he has done. And when he says that, it doesn't just mean make a mess for a mess's sake. He means make a mess so that he can proceed forward and um, trash doctrine. Pero quiero Leo en las dioses. Quiero que se salga afuera. So that's him saying, I want you young people to make a mess of the church. This is the only way. Thank you, Stevie. This is the only way that we can move forward. Oh, let's do that. If a person is gay and accepts the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge them? Hmm. Yeah, so he says all these things, but then he says, don't let homo sapiens into the seminary. There's too much rochagine. Well, I agree with that, but it's just using language as a weapon, the way that the Marxists taught. The Peronists do it, I think, crap more craftily than the Marxists. They use doublespeak really, really, really surgically. It's just say both things and then proceed to do one thing. Now, if you don't believe that, then listen to what he said just last week about deaconesses. In a CBS interview, he was asked, are you going to have ordained deacons? I mean, sacramental deacons for, for women. Are you going to open up this office? And he said, no, full stop. Then he said, unless what you mean by ordained deacons is just deaconesses who we've always had and, and weren't ordained. They're women. Women do women things, but we've always had that. And, and, and basically, yes, we are working towards that. A non-ordained female deacon. Well, if we've always had it, then you wouldn't need to be moving toward it. And um, both of his lieutenants in charge of the October Synod this year have committed to this. This is what we're doing. We're doing non-sacramental women deacons, deaconesses. So I'm not sure why the, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident why the Peronism worked with regard to Frochagine. And that got all the young people who don't like, you know, Globo Homo, that got them excited. Because he used this F word. I get that. Right? That was, that's, that's clever. That's clever parentism. What I don't get is why more folks, particularly with me sounding the alarm before the 23 Synod, saying this is exactly what he's going to do. He's going to say no ordained female deacons. But we have a new in-between class of female deacons that are non-ordained, but they're going to do everything ergonomically that pertains to ordained deacons. They're going to do all that same stuff. They just won't be ordained. 
He just won't challenge the dogmatic sacramentality of all male deacons. But they're going to do everything that the male deacons do, and they're going to confuse everyone, and probably later, you know, some later point in the church, his partisans may, may try to move it forward.